Hi cousins. I'm eating a rusty special. You know what that means? Mmm. That means that I'm waiting to go into the estate sale again. I cannot wait to see what's in here. I'll tell you what. I took a look at the pictures yesterday. And there's a painting in there of boats on the ocean. It looks to be antique. I think it's listed for 75 bucks. I'm hoping I can grab that. This place opens at 10 a.m. At 8 a.m., they give you cards to tell you what uh, order you're going to go in at. Because of the health crisis, they only allow about 30 to or 40 people in at a time. can't remember how many of it's if it's 30 or 40. But uh, I got here at 7 a.m., so an hour before they give out the cards, which is two hours before you get to go in. And look, I'm number eight. Top 10, that's great, but still, there were seven people here before I was. You know, a solid uh, three hours before it opens. Must be some stuff in there that people want, and I hope no one else is gunning for that painting. But let's see. I always check out the jewelry. I'm always looking for grab bags of multiple items for cheap so I can split them up and sell them. This place has been so great for uh, for our business and uh, down at the warehouse, uh, everyone's always excited to see what uh, myself or Peaches bring in from this place. Well, let me take you in. We'll do a little bit of video videoing inside uh, the sourcing stuff. And then, like normal, I'll show you what I got, what I paid for it, and what I think I can get. And maybe I'll give you a few uh, hot tips along the way. Let's get started. Ahora estás viendo a Rusty Como. Mm. This thing is so good. <sighs> Thank you, sir. How you doing? Morning. Good, how are you?
Hey guys, it's Rusty. <laughs> Back in my truck. I'm gonna take off this mask. Guys, look, uh, right in here. I got a couple of items in this bag. And I'm gonna show you what do I spend a day? 100. Can you see that? $131. And we got some goodies to check out. Let's get back to the warehouse, check them out. And I'll tell you why I got what I got start off here cousins let's take a look at this scrapbook as is i paid 15 dollars for this and i don't know yet what i'm going to do with it am i going to just sell it as it is or am i going to take pieces out of this and sell them um got some interest in uh, in here just clippings from books newspapers uh mr angel's birthplace i'm not familiar with who this gentleman is uh, but he's maybe a writer. It looks like a poem, poet, a little sparrow. I'm a, only a tiny sparrow, a bird of low degree. My life is of little value, but the dear Lord cares for me. How sweet. <clears throat> As we open up some more, <clears throat> his last shot. So more, uh, more stories, perhaps by the same individual. I'm not sure. All right, here's a nice black and white photograph. It is glued down onto uh, this piece of paper here. Cub, a Vermont horse who loves to kick the snowballs from his heels. Well, that's nice. This is definitely a very old photograph. This is uh, like 1900-ish, uh, most likely, perhaps uh, even possibly before that. And then another, you can see how that shimmer. This is an actual photograph of a gentleman holding a hat. Uh, it looks like a, uh, an umbrella with a really cool uh, handle there, carved wooden handle, and then a little puppy dog. Uh, Zeke and his master. So that little puppy's name is Zeke. Intelligent Jerry. Some information about dogs. Dog that speaks German, uh, which is uh, fascinating. And as I roll through here, guys, it's just more of these types of uh, newspaper articles. And then this looks like a like an old trade card of some kind. First lesson is, again, glued down into this. So if I were to want to take these out, I'd have to see if I could attach them and or cut them out. But see, that would uh, ruin some stuff on the backside here. A fortunate cat. Here's a little the kitten. Here's another a little trade card type thing, black and white. My first partner, dance partner. And then we got various other little clippings. Here's another photograph of a person and a horse. A pet horse in Eden, Vermont, who is not afraid of anything that may come along. So someone has just come up with like a little story and a title to, to write and put underneath of this. 
yellow kid, the police patrol horse. So another photograph, this is, a, you know, a, looks like the theme here is animals, dogs, cats, birds, horses, frisky, New Hampshire, five years old. Another horse, old Billy, frisky, the cat. So this looks to be an animal oriented uh, Robins, attack, destroyer, they're young. <laughs> so, as we go through here, and I'm not going to stop at every single one of these, but as you can see, it's just chock full of animals of this or that kind. Uh, the whole thing is not full. It goes for a while. So now we're in a point where they just pulled out stuff out of a book. You can see here pictures of animals from a book. Until we get down here, a horse. Okay, it looks like some more real photographs coming up. So here's some uh, some kids with lambs in here. Here's a woman holding, it looks like a dog. And looks like somebody's been removed. And then here are some kids here with uh, these lambs. And I don't know if these are the same photographs that we're in. I'll have to go back and compare. Uh, but they look... Yeah, th look at this. In the newspaper article is that shot. It's this photograph. This is the real photograph. So I've got these together. That's pretty cool, honestly. I'll have to read. Uh, if you fold this down here. The crisis and her little friend. The crisis. What do we got here? The novelist. Oh, actually, maybe it starts up here. Oh, our dumb animals prints a pretty letter to the children with a portrait from the crisis, a member of the fine flock of the sheep owned by Winston Churchill. Whoa. The novelist and living at Mr. Churchill's home in Claremont, New Hampshire. Perhaps somebody helped the crisis to write the letter. Anyway, it's a good one. And here it is, my dear little children. So... This is Mr. Winston Churchill's sheep and a child. Is this the Winston Churchill from England? I didn't know he lived in New Hampshire. I'll have to, I'll have to uh, look into that. That's very strange, but kind of cool at the same time, guys. Some more actual photographs. So the reason I got this here, guys, here's a postcard, a real picture postcard of a bunch of dogs. Cynthia... And her four sisters, Ruby. Cool little scrapbook, guys. Here's another one. And several other pictures of, of people, women, and, and animals. Uh, nice. Man, all kinds in here. What a cool thing. For $15, guys, I could probably take one or two of those pictures and make $15 if I wanted to. I need to look that stuff up about Winston Churchill. That might be a really cool find. Moving on, folks. Let's pull out the stuff that I got here from this sale. Some of these you saw me find, others you didn't. Oop, a bunch of that junk has fallen out into the inside, and that's okay. We'll get into it here. All right, pull the rest of it out, out of that bag. Okay, so I got another lot of postcards for $12. This is a bag full of charms, and I believe that some of these may be silver and even gold, possibly. Bag of charms, $10. That's a lot. I love that. This is an awesome little woven bag. I don't know if this is Native American or if this is Mexican or what, but it is very, very old, and it's in very good condition. And I paid $15 for that little, that little uh, woven bag. Here we have... Uh, a, uh, a baggie full of military-related items uh, from an indi one individual, it seems like. And I paid $15 for that bag. I've got this knife here, this nice knife with a stag handle, a bone, okay, handle. Really good condition, a little tarnished. I only paid, I think, $10 for that. Yep, $10 for that knife. That's good. And then down here, folks, I have... This uh, brooch and earring set, guys, this is Trafari, $15. Oh, my goodness. This is probably a $50 or more uh, set of costume jewelry. It's got all of the uh, faux pearls and the rhinestones intact. And then this, kind of an ugly bracelet. Um, it just looks like fashion uh, stuff. $10, and it even says 
fashion bracelet. Pretty sure there's a market on here, guys. I think this is sterling silver, but let's take a look at it up close and also examine some of these other things a little bit more closely. Let's start off with a knife here. Let me get you a little close look up here. It's uh, definitely uh, old and tarnished here, but if you look closely, it says Germany, and I don't know. Yes, Solingen, Germany. So this is a German made steel knife i'll have to see if i can tell what that says on the back there there is some crack a crack there but it's not compromised the handle or anything like that you can see it's got this interesting uh little metal kind of insert there uh that connects the bone it really connects this metal piece at the bottom uh to the bone handle there nice vintage knife with a nice little uh, brass kind of hilt there I think that this could sell for $20, $30 or more. I need to look it up, but not bad. I mean, I took a risk. Anytime I can find a knife like that for $10 or pocket knives for $5 or less, I jump at it. Moving over here, we have this. As I said, it was a set. It's a Crown Trafari set. Let me take this off the uh, paper so we can examine it. All right, folks. Here we have it off, off the back. And if you see right here where my thumbnail is at, that is the brand, and it says Trafari, and above the little T there in Trafari, it has an image of a little crown, and that's what they call crown Trafari. Maybe you can see that a little bit better. Trafari, and it's got the little crown on the top. That crown indicates that this was made earlier on in the the um, the company's you know uh, time of making things. This is a great little pair because I've got the earrings and the brooch beautiful piece all of these little baguette uh, stones and round stones are intact and uh all these other little uh, faux pearls here awesome little set i've seen sets like this go for over a hundred dollars we'll just have to take a look and see if we can find one just like this or not here we found a ring this is a 14 karat gold ring tied up with a little bow here at the top very simple ring it's just a bow and uh, it's not uh, it's not too heavy. My guess is it's going to be somewhere in the two to two and a half grams, but still, fourteen karat gold per gram is somewhere in the thirty two to thirty four dollars uh, per gram, uh, you know, price right now. So if this is two grams, we're looking at somewhere in the range of seventy dollars, maybe slightly more in spot gold weight. But if somebody likes this this ring and it's in the size, and let me put it on my pinky finger. Yeah, okay, so this is probably going to be around a size six to six and a half based on how it fits on my pinky. Uh, well, there she is. How pretty. Uh, so if I put that up for 100 bucks or something, I bet I could sell that. And I only paid $20 for it. Get off here, you booger. All right. All right, weighs in at about 1.86 grams, so close to two. I was not too far off there. So, you know, this is about a $70 in spot gold weight. I'm, I put it on. It's about an eight size of eight, so it's a little larger than I thought. Um, so, you know, I'll throw it up for maybe $150 and just uh, accept best offer. If somebody offers me $100, i will take it, and I will have made $80 per offer. Next up, we got this cool basket, guys, and you can see uh, just how old this thing is uh just by the wear on the edges you can see i don't know uh enough about these baskets to look at it until people know the colors the uh, different types of um, patterns the materials used and all of those things to determine the way that it's woven uh all of those things come into to uh, as a factor when and factors whenever you're trying to uh date and or determine the um location or people group that made this i'll have to do some good research on this to figure out but i uh, i see these things for sale all the time for 100 200 in antique stores i don't know if they always sell for that or not but i thought for 15 dollars this is not too bad at all i sell stuff in an antique store so at the very worst i could go in there and throw this up for 50 60 bucks you know let's say 60 dollars and uh, you know make a really good profit off of that without even having to try to put it online here guys i bought this little lot that said bag lot 
military memorabilia for $15. And this is what we have. I got this gentleman's name here, Daryl Warren. Uh, you got you got your little uh, name tag here. Another name tag just with uh, the last name. We have a piece of a fabric, uh, like kind of like a, a patch type thing that you would sew on or that came on, maybe it was on the arm, went around the arm possibly. Uh, the little baggie that it all came in has his name and I guess a number, a couple buttons. Here we have his dog tags or what they call dog tags. Daryl Warren, uh, a number and it says Baptist. So he was a Christian man, apparently. Uh, we know he was in the military. I don't know where he was from, but we've got these uh, four of these U.S. Uh, push pin uh, things that would have gone, I guess, on a, on a jacket or on a uniform. We have a belt buckle that says made in the USA, solid brass, a military belt buckle. I still don't know exactly what time period, what age uh, time period this is from guys some of you out there might know more about this stuff than i do i'm gonna have to definitely do some research but i love this this is why i do this i want to learn so when i find stuff i had an inkling this is one of those times i took a calculated risk i thought they're 15 dollars. there's roughly a dozen items in here can i sell these for a dollar a piece I, you you're you're you know sure i can uh, and some of these might go i might get 15 dollars for all those u.s buttons who knows and then the rest of it would be profit but Here's a couple of other badges that say, y'all come. And it has this like shield with like a lion on it. It almost seems like a, a, a more of a European, like an English type thing. I don't know what this is for. This might have been for a particular type of activity, service. Um, it has the name of the company there. It says New York on it. And then finally, and this, guys, is what sealed the deal. I could see the back of this one from the in, from the outside, and I'll show you why. So this is a, a metal rifle. It must have been some sort of, uh, maybe it's indicated what he this individual did for the military, or possibly he won some sort of award for his work with a rifle. But if you turn it over and you look at it, it says Sterling. This is Sterling Silver, guys, Sterling Silver pen. And uh, the weight of it uh, alone probably worth about 5 or $6 if a person was buying this for scrap. I wouldn't want to sell this for scrap because it's a cool a vintage item, and I'd probably sell all this stuff together in a lot since it all do, uh, belonged to this individual, and a collector would probably want all this stuff together because it's it's um, kind of just the provenance of, of what it was and where it came from. This last button here looks like a castle. Again, to me, this is more of a nod towards Europe more so than uh, the United States. So I don't know. No, folks. I mean, U.S. That's that's United States, clearly. Uh, but these these uh, pins and this seem to not go with this a lot. I'm not exactly sure. All right, I'm not exactly sure. But there's a bullseye here. This is for marksmanship. It looks like cool little lot for fifteen dollars. I'm eager to see what I might be able to make out of it. Rusty's hot tip. Now, folks, we've got this bag here of charms. I had an inkling, guys, that there might be something valuable in here, and I've sorted these out. Uh, I just did a cursory look here with my eyeballs, um, and this is how I sorted them. This row down here, I believe, is just cheap, trinkety stuff that I'm probably just going to pitch. Right here, these little charms, nothing special about them at all, okay? Just kind of cheap junk. If I move up, this is the row where I believe that these, uh, there's a good chance that these little um, uh, elephants here are made of sterling silver, okay? I know for a fact that this little pendant, it's not a charm, it's a pendant, is made of sterling silver uh, right here at the bottom. At the very bottom of that piece, there's an indentation, there's a stamp, and I look with my loop. And it says 925. So this is sterling silver right here. This piece is not silver color. It's a little bit yellowed, and it's pretty stout. It does not bend real easily like something of this size if it were straight silver or a soft alloy would bend. So I'm wondering if there's some gold content in this. So I'm putting that to the side there to look. And then I also believe that this little... Uh, horse here is made out of sterling silver as well and then moving up here this last little piece this guy's is gold i don't know if it's 12 14 or more but there's uh, a couple indications first off it's really cool look at that it's like a ram this is a pendant and then on the back you can kind of see just the color difference here uh, of that uh, it also has a diamond you can see a diamond chip right there this is like a 
like a custom made piece here it's like a golden ram really cool guys i need to do a scratch test on that see what purity gold that is but it definitely is gold and then i believe these guys also have some gold content i think it's an alloy on the inside but i think that they've been gold dipped right gold dipped the last thing to do guys is to take my magnets let's start off with the one that i think is gold if it is gold it should not be magnetic at all Okay, it's not even lifting. If these have gold on the outside, it's unlikely that they'll be magnet. Nothing. All right, moving on. Is the horse magnetic? No. Is Coca Pele magnetic? No. 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 Well, here's the deal. So, I think that these charms are silver, but I think that the, the rings are not. So here we go. If I start from this side over here and I try to grab it, nothing happens. But if I come over, here, look at that. Do you see it move? Doo, doo, doo. So the little rings are not made of a precious metal. However, if I grab it from this side over here, it doesn't want to go. So it doesn't mean that absolutely it's made out of silver, but, uh, you know, it's tarnishing like silver does. It's not magnetic like silver um, so I'm going to check it out just because, and these are not marked guys, charms a lot of times will maybe not be marked of the metal. If they're on a chain, that's the same metal, the chain, the clasp might be marked, but the, 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 um, actual charms might not be marked. So, uh, and if they're removed, obviously you don't know what kind of metal was in the chain that these were attached to originally. I'm going to do a little bit of cleaning on this and see if I can't find underneath some of this tarnish a stamp to indicate the purity of the metal. Uh, but if this is silver, if these are silver, that, you know, that would go a long ways to helping them sell really well. And then, of course, all these down here that I think are cheap should all, like most of them, look at that, just jumped up on there. A lot of these guys should should jump up here on the, on the magnets. Here we go. What do we got here? Yep, see, a lot of these are just grabbing, jumping up here really fast. But again, these are not coming up. Not at all, not at all, not at all. So, uh, I'm going to check these out further, but guys, for, for $10, <laughs> excuse me, this little puppy right here will sell... <laughs> Man, I'm going to keep that in, those sneezes. I'm going to keep those in just for your enjoyment. Because you know what? Sometimes when you're dealing with items that have been in dusty places and stuff, uh, it's part of the job. I can't save you from that, folks. Prepare to sneeze if you're going to do reselling. Sometimes. Old books are the worst. But, uh, you know, <laughs> guys, I don't edit this stuff. I give you the full scope, okay? Some of you are going to be annoyed by that, and I'm sorry. But anyhow, cool stuff. Ten dollars. If they had uh, taken a look at this, and they would have known this is this is made out of gold, and this is probably worth fifty, sixty bucks or more just in the gold weight. Not bad. All right, now for the bracelet, guys. <clears throat> I paid ten dollars for this. It said fashion bracelet. We're gonna use my magnet. Nothing here. I took a calculated risk. I didn't take my loop and look, but I saw that there was a little stamp here, right there. Okay, and also right over here. I just took my loop out and I looked at it. You know what it said? It says 925 Hylor, H-I-L-O-R, made in Italy. So this is an Italian-made sterling silver bracelet. And the weight on that is fairly significant, guys. This is, uh, I'm going to guess, shoot, 7, 8 grams. Let's go check it out on my scale. All right, we got it here. It's on ounces, so I need to move it over to grams. Got a few of these gold rings off the side there that I'm selling. Okay, here we go. Wow, I was way off. 25 grams. That's awesome. So, uh, you know, you're usually going to get about 75% uh, of what the gram weight is. So, uh, let's just say it was $20. If, or sorry, 20 grams. If it was 20 grams, you probably get about 15 bucks, right? So, um, but it is a functional piece. That's for scrap. It's a functional thing. And if that brand carries some value, right, Italy, uh, this could go, this could command quite a bit more. So definitely worth the $10 of that spirit. Last up here, folks, I took a shot again on a lot of vintage postcards, which I have not even looked in. 
on the back here, if I just, you know, pull this up, November 20th, 1912, on the front here, you've got this sort of, uh, you know, old school, early 1900s, uh, in fact, it says 1910 here. So, I'm looking at a lot, and the other indication here is, look on the inside, most of these are sleeved. Okay, so, somebody cared about these cards. Somebody thought that these were worth something. Uh, I'd love to show them to you right now. However, uh, I want to do my own video on it. Just a postcard video. We've got a postcard playlist. So if you're interested in this kind of thing, I'll drop this in the next couple of days. I'm going to get uh, to it here shortly. But $12, my guess is there's probably around 20, you know, between 15 and 20 cards in here. So at a dollar a piece for 19, early 1900s cards, I'm going to take a, a flyer on this and hope that I pull out something really nice. But uh, stay tuned for that. Uh, it'll come shortly. Thanks for joining me, cousins. Wasn't the biggest haul today, but this place never lets us down. We find good stuff there all the time. Had I been first in line, I could have got another 8 or 10 gold rings again like I did last time. But another reseller I see around here is kind of my nemesis. He got there first. Nothing you can do. Only one person at the counter at a time. I was gunning for that painting, and it just didn't work out. Looked vintage from the pictures, but that's why you always do your research. Guys, with artwork, with jewelry, everything almost, look at the back. It'll tell you a lot. Take care, cousins. Busted.